This is a motorcycle side case I made a while back out of a pistol case and some budget materials. Before I made this, I spent a lot of time exploring possible storage containers that motorcycle luggage could be made of. One suggestion that came up over and over again was ammunition cans. And it's easy to see why. An ammo can is very well suited for the job. They're durable, weatherproof, top-loading, and most importantly, dirt cheap. In the end, I decided against using ammo cans and decided on this pistol case instead, but now I'd like to revisit the idea of using ammo cans. I'm interested in both how they'd perform as motorcycle luggage and how much sweet, sweet YouTube clout I could gain from that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pair of ammo can side cases on the cheap using only simple tools. There's no welding required this time. Before I can do that, we need to get our materials. So it's time to go to the big store where they sell guns that shoot beef jerky. These are the cans I bought. They're a bit smaller than what I wanted, but they're also the only metal ones I could find at Hickmark. Realistically, any size can will work just as good. In addition to the ammo cans, here's the other materials I used. This is a set of universal hard luggage mounting brackets. They cost me $35 Canadian and can be found on any major e-commerce site. eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, whatever. An advanced DIYer could make these out of scrap metal, but if that sounds too hard, just buy them. This is a bunch of random foam that I'm going to use for inner padding. If you don't care about padding, this is totally optional. It also doesn't need to be foam. It could be fabric. Anything soft will work. Fill them with packing peanuts for all I care. You also need some small hardware for mounting the cans to the brackets. This is the stuff that came with my mounting brackets. It's basically just 10mm nuts, bolts, and washers. You also need the correct size bolts for your motorcycle's luggage mounts. On my bike, I also require a bunch of washers as well. I'll explain why in a minute, but depending on your bike, these might be optional. Lastly, make sure you have some rubber washers handy. And that's everything we're going to need in terms of materials. Let's start turning this pile of junk into something useful. I started out by mocking up the mounting brackets on my bike. On this machine, the brackets need to be spaced away from the frame, which is where the washers come in. To complicate things, the two brackets need to be spaced out by different amounts. After a bit of trial and error, I found the correct amount of washers to put behind each bracket to ensure they lined up correctly. I made sure the brackets sat parallel to one another and tightened them down. I then put some foam mounting tape on the brackets. This is temporary, it's just going to hold the can in place while I line it up. Making sure to keep the can level, I eyeballed a good mounting position and stuck it to the brackets. With the tape holding the can in place, I took a sharpie and marked all the holes on the brackets on the back side of the can. Then I used these markings to drill holes in the back of the can. Since this bike is symmetrical, there's no need to go through all the hassle of mocking everything up on the other side of the bike for the other can. I simply used some paper to make a template of the first can's holes and mirrored it onto the second can. And with that, we are more or less done worrying about mounting until it's time for final assembly. Next, I got to work on the padding for the inside of the boxes. For the sides and lid, I used this 2mm EVA foam. It's dirt cheap and you can get it at craft stores. I measured out each side and cut a rectangle of foam to fit. I then stuck each rectangle on with some LePage spray adhesive and weighed them down until it dried.
I don't do free advertising, so I'd like to take this opportunity to say that Pabst is a terrible beer, and you shouldn't buy it. I opted to use a thicker foam with more cushioning for the bottoms of the can. I used a different kind on each can to see what I liked better. The first can got this standard acoustic foam, and the second can got this toolbox foam that you can cut shapes out of. I didn't glue the bottom foam down, so I can change it out as I see fit. I cut a slot for my camera out of this toolbox foam so I can take it on a ride without worrying about it shifting around. Now that the cans themselves are done, it's time to attach them to the mounting brackets. Since I covered the holes in foam, I had to punch them back out with a screwdriver. Attaching the brackets was as simple as bolting them together with M10 hardware. I included a rubber washer between the can and the bracket that will both seal off the hole and dampen vibration. You can see here that the brackets are a bit long for the cans I chose. I could cut these shorter so they don't overhang, but I chose to keep them long, so if I wanted to, I could reuse them on larger luggage. And just like that, we're pretty much done. Now it's time to mount these on the bike and see how they look. Overall, I think these turned out great. The total cost was under $100 Canadian, and from start to finish, this only took a few hours. These cans are durable, weatherproof, and hold about 7.5 liters per side. I will say that stylistically, these don't really work with my bike. The harsh utilitarian lines would be much more at home on something like a vintage bike, adventure bike, or a chopper. These probably won't be my everyday luggage, but they'll be my go-to for long trips where function matters more than form. Okay, overall I think these turned out really good and I'm actually quite happy with them. But I did make one mistake and I'm going to tell you what that mistake was so that you don't make the same mistake. On these ammo cans, and I'm assuming other kinds of ammo cans, you can remove the lid by sliding it sideways. The mistake I made is that when the bike is tilted over on its kickstand, gravity wants to pull this lid sideways so that it comes off. Which means that sometimes if you just close it too quickly, it'll just slide itself right out of there. It's not the world's biggest deal, I'll probably just modify these hinges a little bit so that the lid isn't removable at all, but it's something you should be aware of. Make sure that gravity is holding your lid in place and not actively trying to remove it. The reason I put them on this way is because I wanted the hinge to be at the front so that the wind couldn't blow the saddlebags open, but with a container this robust, you really don't need to worry about that. You'd be better off worrying about which way your lid slides. A lesser channel wouldn't even tell you they made that mistake, so you better fucking subscribe. With that spiel out of the way, all that's left to do is load these up with some weight and take them on a test ride. I'm filling the right side case with cans of Coke. It holds eight cans snugly with very little room for them to move around. Unless you're regularly hauling around tungsten, this is probably a good test of a heavier than normal load. In the left can, I'm going to put my camera to see how it copes with precious cargo, as well as all of the everyday stuff I'd ride with anyways.
Overall, these worked very well on the test ride. The foam kept all the contents safe, and I didn't feel like I needed to worry about them at speed. You can see in the clips that they do jiggle around a little because there's flex in the Chinesium mounting brackets. I'm not very concerned by this, I don't think it's actually a structural issue, but I'll probably go back and add a gusset in there to keep them rigid. That's all for this time, if you liked this video be sure to subscribe, and as usual if you have any thoughts on how I could have done this better, keep them to yourself.